Welcome back to Rules of Engagement. We just broke down how to deal with the timing. Now we're going to move on to how to set up a contain properly and when to decide how to do that. But first, throughout this episode, remember, tweet any questions you have to me at ISAxLab, and at the end of the episode, the last few minutes will devote to answering questions. Also, remember, you can catch all the VODs at MLG.TV within an hour or two after the broadcast ends. On to Fantasy vs. Major, setting up a contain. Three major things to remember. First, you gotta know when you should even try to go for a contain. In many games, there are situations where you do not want to go for a contain. In some games, it's a great idea. So we're going to explain what to look for to know if you should go for this tactic or not. The second thing is how passive to play your contain. Should you just sit back and let them make the move, or should you actually be uh, making little pokes and little aggressive moves from your contain as a launching point? When to decide which one of those two things to do. Third is what to invest money in while you're containing. Should you try to use exploded an economy while you have your opponent controlled, or should you devote more to controlling them? Should you invest in teching up, or should you just invest in a lot of low tech units? We're going to explore all these things in Fantasy First Major, so let's get right to the game. So we're going to take a look at this from Fantasy's perspective, right? And just to set where the game is up right now, Fantasy's, it's a standard TVT, Fantasy's already identified a few things. He's opened with a Banshee Harass, and he noticed with that Banshee that Major went for a very, very fast third command center. He also noticed before the Banshee died, it was killed by a Raven and two Vikings, and he's also seen a lot of Hellions around the map. He's already been harassed several times at his front door, there's been packs of six to eight to ten Hellions walking around the map and bothering him. These three factors, the fast third, the Raven and two Vikings, and that quantity of Hellions makes it very, very likely Major is opting for mech play. The other thing he knows is that Major is going to be ahead of him in economy. Major's third is already done, trans transforming into an orbital, and his orbital, his, I mean, excuse me, his third command center is just started. Neither player has really done significant harass damage, we can see here, just a few units killed from each side, not too many, so nobody's really going to be ahead in an economy from that factor that puts Major ahead in, in worker count. We can see actually it's even worker count but with that third orbital major is going to be slightly ahead. The other thing Fantasy knows is that Major took a fast third command center and Major's going mech. Both these two things mean that Fantasy is going to be a little bit ahead in army size. But there comes to this problem is that what does he do with his army? He's going to be a little bit ahead in army size as we can see here by about 400, the exact cost of a command center. You know, <laughs> what do you know? It works out that way. Uh, but it's not enough. You can't just walk up and, and kill Major. I mean, Major probably is going to have siege tanks. In fact, uh, looks like he actually doesn't quite have any siege tanks quite yet. But he's got, you know, two siege tanks in production. Uh, Blue Flame on the way. Uh, he would probably hold his high ground, especially with a lot of Hellions, you know, Vikings. He has a Viking the Raven can support. So uh, the odds of him being able to straight up kill Major aren't very high. But he wants to do something with his army. This is the perfect time to set up and contain. When you're ahead slightly in army size, but not a ton and your opponent doesn't have great harassing options at their disposal. He's already parried the threat of the Hellions with, with these supply depots. Of course, Vikings can drop in the back of his base, but that's not a significant threat. So he doesn't worry about counterattacks too much. Uh, he just has to worry about uh, his opponent's main army. He's stronger, but not strong enough to kill him. That's when he goes for the contain. So let's fast forward a tiny bit here, of course, parrying this Hellion harass just one more time. And then the next thing he's going to look for is to push out with a bunch of units. And he's got to... First he's going to see if he can kill his opponent, right? So I did mention that, you know, he probably can't kill his opponent. But you know what? You know, always look for, always look for this, right? Uh, there's, there's a lot of people who, who say, you know, in these, in these positions right here, I can't kill my opponent unless I get lucky. They screw up. They miss a timing. They miss a few units. But you know what? So it doesn't mean you shouldn't look for it, right? <laughs> I mean, uh, there's, there's a lot of wars been won by luck, right? That's what makes a good general someone who takes advantage of luck and looks to try to maximize those moments where good fortune occurs and try to, tries to get the most benefit out of it. So, uh, you know, you don't want to play too passive. Always be looking for potential to do damage, right? He scans a third. Uh, of course, Major moves the third away. Uh, Major doesn't have quite enough to spread himself that thin yet. So, you know, he just leaves one Marine there, keep an eye on it. And I was going to see if he can do any damage over here. The reason he's moving around back this way is because he assumes heading up this ramp, Major will probably be prepared. Right here is another important concept, right? A lot of players would never even try this ramp that Fantasy's trying because they said, well, my opponent's going to be prepared. That's why Fantasy throws a scan here. He says, you know what? Major might be prepared, and then I waste a scan. And that, that's, you know, that sucks, right? It would be better off just never scanning. But if, he, if his siege tanks are back here, 
and then all of a sudden Fantasy can set up a tank line here, then it's not, and then Major is stuck on two bases. Major can't even ever walk out to take his third. And so for the, for the cost of a scan, having an opportunity to get that far ahead is really, really important. Always look for, for opportunities like that. But he sees the siege tanks there, backs away, and this is when he decides, okay, I can't kill my opponent, let's set up a contain. So he's going to build a bunch of siege tanks here, just siege them all up, Marines are going to hang out, Major's going to poke around here, but Major can't come down this ramp. I mean, okay. even with air control, Fantasy's got the uh, the middle watchtower. Major thinks about poking down here, but knows he can't really break this type of bio siege tank army quite yet. Fantasy doesn't even have siege mode yet, but I don't think he needs it quite at this moment uh, because the mech army, of course, can't fight bio into open without the mech being pre-siege, and it's very, very hard to get down his choke point and siege up here before he gets swarmed down by the bio. Oh, so let's fast forward onto the next little point we want to talk about. And that's going to be what to invest in, right? So now Fantasy's got this. Uh, actually, before I hold on to that, I want to point out the scan. Again, he's looking for an opportunity to do damage, right? Uh, so he's not going to just sit back and play it super, super, super passive. He's going to look for chances to be aggressive. And one really cool thing about this is that uh, with his army here, he, uh, from Major's viewpoint, Major's thinking, how can I break the contain? If you want to break the contain, you've got to gather up. Uh, there's two ways. One is to harass a lot and try to get them to spread their forces. But playing mech, he didn't really have too many options to send out small harassing squadrons beyond Hellions. The other way is to gather up in one big force, and, and the contain has to be spread around, right? He has to cover this area, and then, of course, he has to keep an eye on this area as well. And so if the defender can bulk all their forces and push through at one point, they can win just via you know, like a Blitzkrieg all-in-one type of attack. So Major might be bundling all his forces in either this location or this one, which leaves him vulnerable to being attacked from the other direction. So Fantasy scans to try to take advantage of that. Notices there was a siege tank there. He says, you know what? That's a little soft, one siege tank, but it's not super, super, super soft. So I'm going to wait for this extra army to come in. And then once I have this extra support, I think I can punish that one siege tank. And so one of the best ways to reinforce the contain, right? Of course, he has some units here to keep an eye on drop play, uh, but you don't need to just you don't need to just pile units in to contain and make it stronger. You can force your opponent to pull units away from places that could attack or contain, and that makes it stronger as well. So coming in here, of course, we can look at Major's viewpoint. Major's got his army uh, pretty much all around here. These units just moved to respond uh, because of the sensor tower, but previous to that response, his entire army was getting ready to break the contain, but. This pretty much strengthens the contain by doing this little attack over here, of course. Getting a nice trade as well. Not, you know, not a massively favorable engagement, but not a bad trade. Now, he, so th that's the part about trying to, you know, poke and prod your opponent because even if you're ahead, that's often when the most vulnerabilities occur as they're taking more risks. The other thing to note here is how, how he's investing his money. So he's not going to be spending a ton of money on a lot of expansions. A lot of players would say, I have this contain, let's throw down, you know, three expansions right now, right? And he's just starting to do it now, and it's already 16 minutes and 30 seconds. So if he made those investments earlier, he would have less units to support the contain, a higher chance of it being broken. All he has to do from this point is hold the contain. He's going to win the game. He doesn't need a very, very fast fourth base. All he needs to do is get it up eventually because Major will never get one. So we can see before he started even a fourth or fifth, he has, you know, he's built a second factory, and he built two additional barracks. So he's on tons and tons and tons of production, just wants to hold the contain, doesn't want to make too many greedy investments. So from here on out, just w with that type of infrastructure investment, this production is so insane that Major is going to have a really, really hard time breaking the army fantasy can throw at him. We just got to gear for one big push, and he's going he's gonna to eventually decide to do it. Prior to that, a little bit of Banshee harassment. And this is one of the best ways to break contain. Again, fantasy reinforces this contain, not by sending units to defend against the Banshee, but instead by mounting an attack over here. And what this means is that, you know what, Major, I know you're trying to break my contain with your army here. I'm going to attack you over here. And now, now what does Major have to do? He has to respond with his army. And, and this is going to really uh, take a crimp into his initial attacking plans. Of course, forcing a PDD, getting the Vikings and the, the Banshee. Uh, the Banshee, I think, is still over there killing a few units. But with it being distracted, he gets a chance to kill that Banshee. Major has to pull a Siege Shanks back here. And that pretty much ruined Major's whole contain breaking plan. From here on out, Fantasy is ahead enough in supply. He's got a very strong contain. He now even has air superiority. There's no way Major can break this contain, and Major's forced to leave the game a few minutes later. Uh, this is basically a perfect example of how to set up a contain. The three big points, again, on setting up a container, knowing 
when to do that contain, okay? Uh, you do it when you're ahead in army slightly, but not enough to kill your opponent. Uh, and then what you do is you use that to just keep your opponent pinned into base, and you can play a starvation game from that point. This is especially, uh, it's, you can see this in, in Zerg versus Zerg, it's used extremely frequently with Roach and Fester lines. It's very hard to break a concave of Roach and Fester if they're contained your opponent. You can also see in Protoss versus Protoss in Colossi Wars. And in Terran vs. Terran, of course, Terran vs. Protoss as well. Almost every match of this situation to contain your opponent. Then you have to know not to play too passively. That gives your opponent rooms to make their own moves to get back in the game. When your opponent's making their own moves, the best way to stop those is by making aggressive moves of your own to interrupt their plans. Of course, the last point, don't be too greedy. When you have your opponent contained, you're already on the winning track. Just make sure you don't lose that contain, and you'll be sure to win. We're going to go to a quick commercial break, and then we'll be right back with uh, another game.